Well, hi everybody, it's Sandy. Welcome to another watercolor flower video. This is the third in my series, and who knows how many more there's gonna be. I'm gonna use Strathmore Cold Press uh, watercolor paper for this one, and the Garden Bloom stencil from Memory Box. And yes, I do keep mine in stamp pockets because everything else, all my stamps and everything are in them, so why not? If they fit, I do so. Now I already have all of these kind of traced out. I turned it different directions, I flipped it, did all different kinds of things so I could get a layout that I wanted and traced just the outlines on there. The paper is bigger, as you can see, than a card front because I wanted an area larger so I can trim it down, pick the best looking area. And I'm gonna use this masking fluid on it. This is the Grumbacher Miskit and it turns orange when you shake it up. It's got a little coloring in it so you can see when you have you, you know, painted over an area, you've, you've used it on a certain spot. Some of them are white or they go clear and it's a little harder to tell when you've actually covered an area. So this one is good for that. I have some that are in a pen form, some masking fluids, and then others like this one are in a brush. I also have some of this masking fluid in one of the little tiny precision tip bottles. And it flows out really, really fast, but it does work, and I can get a finer line with it than I can here. But these are giant shapes, so just painting with a brush is a much faster way to do it. If you're not going to just splash watercolor all over the whole background like I'm going to do here, then you don't have to paint the entire thing in. But, of course, since this is a video and I'm teaching, I figured I will just go ahead and paint the whole thing in but I won't make you watch the whole painful process. So here's the finished one. I've painted all the leaves and the stems and everything. And I've got my, my watercolors out. These are my Gansai Tambi. I don't know how you, how you say that. Uh, watercolors by Kiritaki. And I'm just gonna splash watercolor around the background. And I can go right over all that masking fluid and create whatever kind of background I want in there. If you wanna paint images in there, you can do that. You can throw more colors in there, just get kind of loose and crazy with it. I want this one to feel like just super painterly. And this paper is very different than, like I, a lot of times I'll use the Tim Holtz Distress watercolor paper. And this tends to like soak the paper in in a different way and get a different surface texture. And not surface texture like the, the, um, the lumpy side of the Ranger stuff but it, I don't know, it's just a softer texture. I don't know, the, the soft surface of it. At some point, once I feel more experienced, I'll sit and do a side-by-side -side comparison of all the different watercolor papers and all the, the different uses I see for each one of them because I go to each one for different reasons and different times and I don't know what I'm doing yet, so I'm just kind of figuring that out. This is a little uh, pickup for rubber cement and glues and other kinds of things and I'm just rubbing it on here. The paint had to be completely, totally and entirely dry for this to work. And the section under my right hand where you see kind of a little mushy mess there, that part was not dry and that's what happened to it, that whole little corner down there. So unfortunately that is going to be the kind of corner I'm going to hack off but I'm glad I made this bigger so that I'm going to be able to hack that off because that's just kind of a mess. Even the surface of the paper is kind of all gunked up. But now I'm going to finish off each one of these petals and you can kind of see I'm just drawing in a rough petal shape around the outside points. Now there's points between each one so there's another layer of petals and that's going to become more clear as I do my painting. But I'm just sketching in kind of an oval petal shape. So you don't have to really be able to know how to draw to do this and it's going to be really loose when we get the watercolor in there. So don't stress about not being able to draw a flower. And I am going to complete that section down in the lower right and see if painting over that works to fix it. I don't think it will, but I figured I was going to try at the time. So now I wanted to add some masking to the centers of the flowers as well. You know those little, um, I think they're called stamen. <laughs> you guys have told me what they're called before. The little things on the inside of a flower. And I wanted to add some. So I'm adding in some as lines and some as dots, just so I can have some white areas in the center of the flower because I'm gonna put some dark color in there. And I wanna make sure that I wait until that is completely dry 
before I start the painting. Just like when I did the background, I waited for that masking fluid to be really dry. So I am going to start on the leaves here, painting those in before I, I start on the flowers because I want to give that, that masking fluid time to, time to dry. I'll link you in the doobly-doo, of course, to all the supplies, the masking fluids. I'll give you a whole bunch of options for different masking fluids and papers and stuff so you can check it all out for yourself and decide what you might want to try. The color I'm throwing in here on these, I'm leaving some white areas and I'm some of them I'm pointing toward the upper right as if I was trying for a light source, but really this almost can look like it's coming from any direction. You don't have to really stress out about that too much. Um, I just decided to because that's kind of how I roll when I do my coloring and painting. So I tend to give almost everything a light source. But now I want to make some really rich, beautiful, reddy, reddish, orangish kinds of flowers in, and start coloring the centers. And even though that center part is mostly dry, I really want to start my petals at the base of the petals. I'm not going to hit that center section until I get the petals finished. Because I want to have a little different color in there. So I'm adding my yellow on the outside and then letting some of that color drag up into it and then just adding more water. And the more water you add, the more you're going to, to kind of blend those colors. And some of it, I, I kind of think I probably should have started with the yellow, but I like how adding the red first and then forcing myself to only do dabs of yellow sort of worked out. I mean, it's different than going the opposite direction. But you can see my brush still has some of the red in it, so some of the petals aren't as yellow. So the more you clean your brush, the more pure yellow you'll end up getting. So do as I say, not as I do. But I'm first starting with all those outside petals, the ones that are on the top of the flower, not the little petals in between. So here you can see that there are like two layers of petals in the flower. So I'm just going to continue with each one of them in the same way and just continue to add the red on the inside and the yellow on the outside and then just mush a whole heck of a lot of water until it kind of starts to blend. Now these petals, I had trouble as I was going. I, at first I thought they were going to be on top and the other ones were going to be on the bottom and then I changed my mind halfway through so yeah I, I was just kind of playing and making a mess and that's where I ended up landing is providing uh, these as the top flowers on, on this bottom bottom right flower. These are the top petals. The color on the bottom flower is richer red because I've got more red in it. So I am going to dab off some of that color so it goes a little more to the pink side like the other flower and matches it a little better. But I'm using more water and less paint to fill in some of those back flowers. But I'm also making sure that I leave some white areas because that's what's going to give it this real painterly sort of a look overall. So here I'm just dabbing off some of that because I want to make the two flowers match a little bit better. And you see that definitely worked to lighten up some of that red and allow it to be kind of pinky. And now I'm going to start working on the center of the flowers. And I started with my little brush. This is a number six brush that I've been working with most of this time. And then I switch over to my big oval brush. And I think, I can't remember the size of it. I will put a link to it in the doobly-doo. But I just started kind of piling color in there. First reds, and then I decided I wanted to throw some purples in there to make it darker. And adding a little bit of depth to that. And then I thought, well, okay, a little more purple, see how that goes. It starts to blend out. Then I'm starting to get some of that richness that I was looking for. But I decided to add a little bit of blue as well once I took that masking fluid off. So you can see my little stamen are in there, and I'm adding a navy blue, which is one of the blues that I used in the outside background. And this, I think I flipped the whole paper by this time to do this little paint, painterly work on the inside of the flowers, because that's the only place where I'm adding detail. And some of my spots in there weren't shaped the way I wanted, so now I can go back in with the blue paint and cut those back down to size and make them look the way that I kind of really wanted to. And this is back to the number six brush again. The number six seems to be my go-to, regardless of what size the thing is that I'm painting, unless I'm doing big washy backgrounds. So the, different people like different things and yeah. 
Anyway, so that is the, the finished painting and here is how it looks on a card. I cut off the chunks that I didn't like and I added a sentiment. It's a Lawn Fawn Thanks sentiment as a die cut and just glued it on top. I love how it came out. It's just so artsy fartsy. Oh my gosh. Really love this look and how super painterly it feels. This was my early version when I was testing this out and I like this technique too. I mean it's the same thing. I just didn't blend the color as much and I didn't put as much color in the centers of it. And I overlaid two of the die cuts so I could have kind of a drop shadow and one of the one in the back I colored blue with a Copic marker. And I think they both came out great. So if you missed the first two in the floral series, here they are. You can click on either one of them to go check it out. And eventually I'll have a fourth. So subscribe to my channel so you can potentially see that one as well. Alrighty, you guys take care. Have a great day.